Hello and welcome to this maths training video. In this video we're going to continue our series on fractions and in this video we're going to continue building on the method that we looked at in the previous video. So in the previous video we learned a method that was really helpful for when you're dividing fractions by each other and in this video we're going to have a look at a few worked examples to help you just really drill this into your brain. So as always if you're feeling really confident, really comfortable with the subject so far then please feel free to skip to the next video in the series uh, which you'll find really helpful. If however you're a little bit unsure of yourself and you'd like to have a bit more practice at this then watch this video because this is going to really help you out in making sure that you understand this subject really thoroughly. So as always we'll have questions come up on the screen and then we'll work through how to figure those out so maybe when the question comes up it'd be a good idea just to pause briefly have a go at working out the question yourself and then let the video play so that you can see whether you've got the right answer the right method or not. So without further ado let's get stuck into our first example. So our first question is, what is 3 quarters divided by 3 eighths? So we're going to write that down uh, so we know what we're dealing with. So we've got 3 quarters, so that's 3 quarters divided by 3 eighths, like so. Now if you remember in the previous video in this series, we said that when you're doing this kind of calculation, uh, we remember the mnemonic DUM, D-U-M. So D, when you're dividing, you, you turn the second fraction upside down and then M multiply together. So let's have a look at what that's going to uh, go like. So we've got 3 quarters, 3 over 4, and we're going to turn the second fraction upside down. So that gives us 8 over 3 when we flip that. And then we're just going to multiply these together. And remember, when we're multiplying fractions, it couldn't be simpler. We multiply the top two numbers together and the bottom two numbers together. So 3 times 8 gives us uh, 24. And then 4 times 3 gives us 12 on the bottom there. So that's 24 over 12. And if we simplify that, if you like, if we cancel that down, you can see there that 24 over 12, which is the same as 24 divided by 12, gives us the answer of 2. So therefore, 3 quarters divided by 3 eighths is equal to 2. So that's our first example there. Let's move straight on to our second example. So our second example, we're looking at this question, what is 1 quarter divided by 1 half? So what is 1 quarter divided by 1 uh, twelfth, sorry, that is, beg your pardon. So let's have a look at doing this calculation. We've got 1 quarter divided by 1 twelfth. And again, we're just doing this repeatedly because it gives us uh, the right idea. It'll really drill this into our uh, minds and we'll understand this really clearly. So again, let's work through the process that we've discussed. We're going to take the second fraction. We're going to turn it upside down. So we've got 12 over 1. And then we're going to multiply those two numbers together. So 1 times 12 gives us 12. And then 4 times 1 gives us 4. And we've got 12 divided by 4 which is going to give us 3. Now, if these answers are kind of giving you a little bit of pause for thought and you're wondering, well, how can a quarter divided by a twelfth give us 3, then please do go back and check the previous video in this series because we went through it in some detail there, looking at some uh, kind of physical graphical examples as well as to how uh, we could best understand this. And uh, hopefully that was of some real value. So uh, if you're unsure of how we get in what might seem like kind of counterintuitive answers, then please do go back and watch that previous video. Okay, so let's move on to our third worked example. And we've got 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2. So we've got uh, 3 halves divided by 1 half. So we'll write that out now. You may notice here that we've got uh, what's referred to as an improper fraction on the left hand side there and there's absolutely no difference whatsoever that makes no difference to this calculation the only thing to watch out for uh, is when you've got perhaps um, a mixed fraction instead of an improper fraction as then you will need to do a little bit of conversion you'll need to turn it into a, an improper fraction uh, what i think of as a top heavy fraction uh, before you do this method but the, the method is exactly the same so we've got three over two uh, we're going to turn the second fraction upside down so we end up with two over 1 and then we're going to multiply those two numbers together. So again very simply 3 times 2 the top two numbers multiply together 3 times 2 gives us 6 and then we're going to do 2 times 1 which is going to give us 2 
And once again, we've got six over two, which gives us three. So the answer to three over two divided by one over two is going to give us the answer of three. Very nice. Okay, so uh, hopefully we're getting this by now. Again, if you're just building your confidence, then just uh, pause the video before you uh, move on to the next one, have a go at this, and then see if we get the right answer. So here we've got one eighth divided by one half. So again, that previous video is really helpful in kind of helping you to understand this. When we can kind of think of this as how many halves are there in one eighth. So again, we might get a slightly different answer to what we've looked at so far with this one. But let's write it down. We've got one eighth, and then we're gonna divide that by one half. So just exactly the same method, one eighth, and we're gonna turn the second fraction upside down. So we've got two over one, and then we're just gonna multiply those together. So one times two, and that's gonna give us two, and then eight times one is going to give us uh, eight. And you can see there now we've got uh, a slightly more normal looking fraction, but again, if we cancel this down, we've got to think about what number goes into the top number and the bottom number. Uh, and of course, looking at that, it's pretty obvious that it's going to be two. So we just uh, cancel these down. Uh, and again, I'll just show this in long form so it's clear what I'm doing. We're gonna divide the top number and the bottom number by two. So that's two divided by two and eight divided by two. Two divided by two is one. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So there we've got 1 quarter. So you can see there that the answer to this fraction, 1 eighth divided by 1 half is 1 quarter. Okay, so we've got one final example now, and this one's a little bit trickier because we've got here that uh, mixed fraction that we spoke about earlier. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. We've got 5 and 3 quarters divided by 3 eighths. So the first thing that we need to do is change this into an improper fraction or a top heavy fraction. And the way that we do that, uh, if you remember in a previous video we discussed how to do this, uh, it's pretty simple. All you've got to do is uh, this number times by this number at the bottom, uh, and that's going to tell you how many quarters there are uh, in this bit effectively. So 5 times 4 gives us 20. So we've got five times four gives us 20. Again, if you're unsure about how this works, we have done a video on this previously, so please go back and check that. And then we add this number that we've created here onto this number at the top. So we do 20 plus three, that's gonna give us 23. And then we just put that on top of our fraction, on top of our mixed fraction. So we end up with an improper fraction of 23 over four. So now we've got 23 over 4, and now we can just apply exactly the same uh, kind of method that we did earlier. So if you look at this, just bear in mind that this 23 over 4 represents exactly the same amount as 5 and 3 quarters. 23 quarters is exactly the same as 5 and 3 quarters. We've just put it into a slightly different format because it's going to help us enormously with this next stage. So we take our second fraction from up here in the question and we turn it upside down as we've done previously so we end up with 8 over 3 and then we multiply those two together so 23 times 8 is going to give us 184 and then we're going to divide that by the bottom number which is going to be 12 so we've got 184 over 12. now again we want to kind of find a simpler answer to this so we need to break this down a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, uh, what numbers do both of these go into? 184 and 12 will both divide by two. So we've got uh, 184 divided by two, and it will also uh, do 12 divided by two. And again, for simplifying fractions, please go back and watch uh, another video that we've made in this series. We've done a lot on fractions because it's quite a tricky subject for some people. Uh, but you can see that now we've got down to uh, 92 over 6 and we need to find a number that both of these divide by again well the good news is they both divide by 2 again so 92 divided by 2 over 6 divided by 2 so that's going to give us 46 over 3 and then when we look at that you can see there that actually uh, that won't go down any smaller so 46 over 3 there's no uh, common factors between those. The reason being that this bottom number won't divide by 2, so we think about the next prime number up, which is 3, 
uh, and 46 won't divide by 3. The nearest number to it is 45 that will divide by 3 evenly without any remainder. However, what we could do, if we wanted to, is we could change that into uh, a, a mixed fraction if we wanted to. So we could think, well, how many uh, of these are there in 46? So again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the way that I'd do this is I'd go, how many threes are there in 46? Threes into four, there's one of those with one left over. And then threes into 16, uh, well, of course, we've got five of those, remainder one. Now, this is quite helpful because we can also write that as 15 and one, that's that remainder one brought over, and one third, which is the fraction that we were working in. So we can say that the answer to this question is 15 and one third. So that is quite a tricky one really and if you stayed on to the end of this video you've done well to get this far and I hope you managed to figure that out. There's quite a few more steps involved there but it's always good to challenge yourself and stretch yourself a little bit by doing things that are a little bit trickier. You can see that actually the process wasn't that difficult, it just followed the exact same kind of principle uh, up to this point and then it was just a matter of applying some of those other skills that we've developed in previous videos in terms of simplifying and then converting from uh, an improper fraction into a mixed fraction. So some easy questions there, some slightly more challenging ones, uh, but all really helpful for you in developing your maths because of course uh, these videos are mainly aimed at people who are training to be electricians. They'll help you no matter what you're doing uh, with maths and fractions, but they are primarily aimed at electricians. So hopefully there's been something in there that's been helpful for you. Uh, if you've watched right to the end, then thank you very much for doing so. If you've got any questions or thoughts, then please leave those in the comments section below. In the next video, we'll be moving on to look at the subject of adding and subtracting fractions. Uh, which does get a little bit trickier, a little bit more thought needs to go into that. However, not so much thought that it's not something that we're going to be able to absolutely smash. So, all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.